welcome to the very first episode of Knitting Noodle Podcast. Um, I find, have found myself lately watching a lot of knitting podcasts and I thought it would be fun to give it a go. So here's my own podcast to join in everyone else. Um, but I guess to get started, a little bit about me. My name is Adira. I am 25 years old. I have a little baby. And I have a I have my own business, I guess, company, uh, Wolf Baby Boutique, which I mainly only make baby items. So what you're going to be seeing on this podcast is a lot of baby things and small items. So like baby clothing, accessories, and stuffed animals. So before, before you start watching, the disclaimer, this is mostly baby stuff. Um, now, one of my very favorite podcasts is uh, Needles at the Ready. I absolutely love them. They're so cute. And the, I believe they're, they're married, two husbands. They both knit. One of them crochets, um, needle felting, and they're just so adorable. And I love their format. And they're so fun to watch. So I kind of wanted to model this after theirs because it's so much fun. Like, I just zone out while I'm knitting. And it's like I'm part of their little knitting gossip. So I'm going to try to emulate their their formula or format, um, obviously with my own flair, with my own stuff. Um, so I'm going to divide this into finished items, almost finished items, uh, things that are still on the needles, um, procurements, which is... I, I like that because it's a fancier way to say how I waste my money. But we'll keep procurements because it sounds fancy. Um, and then at the end, they have like a little gossip. Uh, I call it gossip. But they, they talk about books they've read and like their reading of them. Uh, TV shows and other things that they're doing. So I thought I'd throw that in there with some some books, some TV shows, uh, movies if I watch them, um, and then like listening podcasts. I don't want to rate other people's knitting podcasts because I don't know, that feels icky. All right, so without further ado, let's get into the knitting part where I get to show off what I've done. Oh, and I want to do this every month. So once a month, I'm going to do a little basically review of what, what I'm doing and what I've finished. So to start off, some of these might be from a little bit more than a month ago. I just can't really remember when I made them. So these are all recent things that I've finished. And for finished items, I have 12 all kind of small though. First one, I'll try to go in chronological order. I have this guy, which is super cute, little little doggy. Um, I ended up uh, the pattern that I used. I think suggested doubling up yarn, or I decided to do it myself. Uh, but I used worsted weight and doubled that up so and didn't size up my needle. So this guy is very stiff, not very floppy. He also is stuffed with organic cotton, so that also makes him really stiff and heavy. Which, I mean, for babies, that's good because there's, there's something to chomp on. There, there, it has a bite to it. So in that, that aspect, the stiffness is fine. Um, pattern was a little, a little wonky. Not sure if I'll make it again. I don't know. He is kind of cute though. So may maybe I'll give it another shot. 
Uh, but this pattern, I'll try to link it below. It is a Ravelry pattern, so I'm not sure if I can make a direct link to that. I don't know. I'll, I'll see what I can do to get around that. But for now, I'll put the pattern and let me know if that works or not, like the links to the patterns. Um, also put the name, so if you want to just search up the name of the pattern in Ravelry, it'll probably pop right up. So yeah, that's the first one. The second one is this headband. Technically, it is finished. If I wanted to add like a little accessory, like a flower, a bow, I could probably do that. Um, I was originally going for fall colors for this but uh, ended up looking more Gryffindor, which I think is pretty cute. <clears throat> Maybe I'll see if I could figure out a little, little lion accessory I could put on there. Um, this pattern is very simple. It's a very basic pattern. Uh, this particular size is supposed to fit I believe 6 to 12 months. It still kind of fits on my 18th month old's head, barely. So there is a good amount of stretch on there. Um, some of the issues I have with the pattern is it doesn't give a gauge swatch and uh, the measurements, like what, what the measurements of the finished project are supposed to be. So I have no idea if this is accurate if this will fit on a six month old, because I made this after my son, I think he was like nine months. It fit him up until basically now and he's 17 months. So, I mean, it it does stretch. I just don't know if this is too big. So that that's the only problem I have with the pattern. Otherwise it's really simple, really easy. Um, and yeah, uh, I also don't think it has a yarn recommendation. I think it just kind of goes right into the pattern. So yep, that's the headband pattern. Um, let's see what's the next thing I did. Um, next one, if we're going chronological order, I dabbled in crochet a little bit. Uh, first disclaimer, I cannot crochet. I am terrible at crocheting. So the fact that I did this, as you might think it looks terrible, but <laughs> For me, this is incredibly impressive. I am impressed with myself. Also the fact that I kind of just made this up as I was going. Um, I have no idea like what to do to make it keep its shape or what my plans are with it, but I made a spider web. Um, I made this very close to Halloween. So this was a little over a month ago, um, but I was trying to figure out a spider pattern to go with it and I have one up here it was just too close to Halloween and I couldn't get it out in time so I have it saved for next year um, and maybe I'll I'll polish this up a little bit so make another one that doesn't isn't as you know lumpy I guess but pretty impressed with that. Just make a little little spider web hat, maybe. <laughs> but my my victory with crochet, I count it as a win. Um, next project is um, I have a whole bunch of stuff from one of the last videos that I did, which is. I believe five hair accessories, which I'll have linked. I think it's this side. Pretty sure it's this side. If I, it is one of the sides. I'll have it pop up over there. You can click on it if you want to learn how to make these things. First off is this hair scrunchie. Now, this one, I did not cast on enough stitches or, uh, and the yarn that I used is not ideal. It doesn't have a lot of stretch. It was some leftover, like, little stash, a leftover ball in my stash that I wanted to get rid of and use. 
but probably is not best like the best for hair it is very staticky and uh fuzzy so it'll leave a lot of lint um and then on top of that me not casting on enough stitches i cannot use this in my own hair my hair is thick and i can't even wrap it around twice uh it worked for my sister so might just let her use it if she even wants it um but considered a finished project i finished it someone can use it with thinner hair um another project from that same video is a hair donut now if you don't know what a hair donut is it's basically a a cheat or an aid to make a perfect little bun i'll insert a little picture uh dancers usually use these i believe uh i don't know if they use a donut i've heard of the sock trick that they use in the marines for women but it's the same idea it's making a donut um uh, but there's this the idea is to match the yarn to the person's hair so this is for my middle sister she is an ice dancer so she usually has her hair down, but if she ever decides to have her hair up in a bun, this is made specifically for her. Uh, no one else in my house can use it. She's, I'm pretty sure, has the lightest hair in the house. So I made that for her. Um, another thing from the video, these little cute bobby pin roses. It is a very easy pattern. Um, oh, and for these two, um, it was basically my own pattern. This supposedly had a pattern, but it was just basically a blog with a mom saying that she made it with no pattern at all. So this I had to figure out myself. Um, this is a German pattern. Uh, there is an English translation that is on Ravelry, which if you click the pattern at first, you'll only see the German. You just have to scroll down a little bit and there's the English one. But I think these are adorable and they're a great way to get rid of any uh, like extra sock yarn that you have. You can make them bigger, but I think this particular style where it's just a spiral is perfect for smaller yarn. So any uh, weight one or sock yarn that you have. Uh, I think this is a great project to get rid of them. Uh, and then this is a slight fancier of a rose. Uh, I just kind of loosely sewed it onto the snap hair clip. Um, probably should be secured better, but this was only for my sister to use in the video quickly. So I'll probably fix that up a bit. The other thing I made are these adorable hair bows. This one I put on a hair tie. I think it turned out adorably cute. It's still cute. I, I really like how it turned out. And then this one is a little bit bigger of one. This is a wool that's not super wash. So I'm not really sure what I'm going to do with it since... It, it gets washed once and it's basically shrunk to here and turned into a felt, a felt mush ball. Um, so yeah, there's those. And then the final finished item I have are these adorable mittens. These are Norwegian style. Uh, the pattern is by Pearl Soho. Uh, I only remember that off the top of my head because I'm currently working off the pattern right now to finish another pair. These I'm selling at an upcoming craft fair that I'm doing. You can find the information for that if you're interested in coming down below, if you're in the Long Island area. Um, but I like these a lot. These are to fit size three to nine months. Um, they do not have thumb holes, which for that age is perfect because the thumb is the nightmare to get in. Um, I do wish there was a larger size because these are adorable. 
that had the thumb hole. I'll probably combine two patterns to make that happen. Um, cause I love the Norwegian style for mittens, the little, little triangle tops and the boxiness I think is so, so cute. Um, one thing that I've learned about Norwegian style mittens is, uh, you're supposed to either size down or double up on the yarn, uh, because it's supposed to be stiffer than a normal mitten is. It's made for cold weather because Norway weather is, is cold, cold. So you're supposed to have a really stiff, really thick mitten to keep all the cold air out. Also, it is ideal to make it out of wool. So this is a super wash wool. So I can go through the washing machine on a delicate cycle. Probably shouldn't get dried. This is more line dry, which I think is most outdoor stuff. You're not really supposed to put it in the dryer. But uh, this is a, the yarn is from Hobby Lobby. It's a hand dyed wool, 100%. I don't think it's merino. I think it just says wool. Um, but this will be super cozy, especially for babies. I believe with wool, even if it is wet, it'll still keep in heat. So wool is ideal for all outdoor things like mittens, hats, and socks. So that's something to keep in mind while you're making your own little mittens. Um, so yeah, that's my last finished item. And then for, I have a whole section of almost done. Let me double check how many I have. Seven almost dones. So for almost dones, I have this, which looks like a giant tube, which is basically what it is. Um, basically this, this is done. I just can't finish it until I have a tennis ball and I keep forgetting to get one. I have had this done actually for quite a while. I just can't, I keep forgetting to get the tennis ball. It is a dog tug toy. So basically you get the uh, tennis ball, you make a knot or two or three if you can to keep the ball in there and then you have a tug toy for your dogs. Um, I made this uh, because in our last craft fair we decided to expand since for the craft fairs um, Half the people who have babies don't come in. And then the other half who do come in, uh, they don't have babies in the family yet, but a lot of them have like little dogs or pets. So we thought since we're selling under my name, Wolf Baby Boutique, and we both make basically only baby items, that we'd include a fur baby section for all the, the pet people. And in the last one, there's a lot of big dogs and we don't have a lot of stuff for the big dogs. So I thought a tug toy would be nice for a larger dog. So there's something for them as well. So all I need is, is the tennis ball. The second, these two are the same pattern. It is a dog bone. I just have to finish seaming it up and stuffing it. I was kind of waiting because I want to get uh, little squeakers to put in there. So when you bite it, it squeaks. And then I did the same pattern, but I modified it to make it bigger. I probably should, if I make this again, make the little bone parts a little longer because it's right now it's a little stubby. It's going to be a stubby, stubby fat bone, which is fine. But again, I also, I made this for like a larger dog, and I also want a squeaker for it. So the squeaker is holding me up. Um, next one is this I made. It's one of the last, I guess the last, I pre-made a pumpkin. I have on my Etsy, I think I still have them up, is pumpkin spice scented pumpkins, which is I love the pattern so much. It's so cute. And 
I pre-made one and I never stuffed it and pumpkin spice season is basically over so I'm probably gonna take that off of the website soon I probably should have already but I'll leave it up until after Christmas um, and then temporarily take it down until next fall and then I'll just have this one pre-made for them because that was probably the best seller on on Etsy because who doesn't like pumpkin spice scented things um and then the other thing I did is I made a whole bunch of wool beads so this isn't knitting this is wet felting um I'm making or going to make little pacifier clips so I got the clips I just have to string these made them all nice Christmas colors make little Christmas pacifier clips um and the process was very easy um there wasn't like wool felting it's not really a pattern you can't really use a pattern for it it's kind of you just it's almost like sculpting you can't really have a pattern for sculpting but for wet felting what you do is you get the wool wet and then you gently rub it until it gets into the shape that you want and then you let it air dry and it keeps that shape and mats together into very cute little beads um the good thing about wool and that being on a pacifier clip is that wool is antiseptic it is smell resistant and um babies chewing on it won't really do anything it's already matted together so honestly baby chewing on it will probably just make them harder firmer beads and even more fun for them to to chomp on uh but yeah i just have to string those together um the process was easy once i got back into the swing of it it's been a long time since i've wet felted uh one of the biggest tips that i had to re-remember was to be gentle wool you have to be gentle with uh at first i was like really rubbing trying to get it into balls going quick um and then i was wondering why it kept breaking apart it was flattening it wasn't forming the ball uh so after like an hour of struggling i finally watched a video and the first thing the woman said was be gentle with it and i was like i remember this wool is something that you have to be really gentle with um I don't know if it's because of the little hooks on the yarn the gentler you are with it and slower actually the faster that it works up and neater that it does so if you're working with wool always remember gentle gentler than you want to be <laughs> um and then after that uh oh i just realized i didn't show my snowman pattern I think he got buried underneath all my stuff, my finished items. I forgot to show this finished item, which is a pattern that I made up myself. It's a little snowman, which I'm about to show uh, some almost finished snowman that I'm making. Well, look how cute that is. And then I have the larger version of him. So there's a baby and a big one. I'm um, going to make this into a, a nice chubby snowman. We got bigger wood eyes that we're gonna put on um i can't believe i forgot this i'm so proud of this it's, it's one of my most detailed uh patterns that i've ever made up myself proud of it so yeah i have two actually bigger ones uh this one i kind of just cinched the head in less than i did on this one uh, but they're knit in the same size so I think it's just that since this one is pulled in tight it looks smaller than this one but yeah two more snowmen uh to go on the table for our little Christmas fair that we're doing pretty sure it's a holiday fair Christmas fair so yeah that is all my almost finished items and then to get onto what is on the needle. Some of these you'll be seeing multiple times because they have been on pause for so long 
and I really need to finish them and I'm hoping by me showing it on here keeps me accountable and makes sure that I actually work on them instead of starting new projects. So the first has been on the needles for over a year. I promised my boyfriend a pair of socks and it has been over a year since I promised them. And this is the first sock. <laughs> um, it's just so tedious. It's not even hard, it's just that it's tedious and I get bored so easily. That's why I have like a million small projects. But I have a hard time focusing on one for a long time. But um, I mean, I made it through the leg, which honestly I think was one of the most tedious, boring parts. I'm partway done the foot. And then what I'm really nervous for is the heel. Um, I have never made a pair of socks before, so especially not like this. I guess I didn't process when I was doing this. Um, it said to use a holding yarn to hold the stitches so you could come back and take it apart later and then work the heel by itself. Um, I decided this is a wool sock with a bit of nylon for, for the stretch to it. I decided for wool that my holding yarn was going to be alpaca, so this is going to be probably impossible to take out. Another reason why I'm, I'm dreading this. Um, also, I, as you can see by the weird, weird holders I have going on, I have borrowed the needles from this for other projects. So I have to wait till that's freed up or buy myself another pair of, uh, of needles. So yeah, hopefully, or no, not hopefully, I am, I am going to finish this and then it's going to be a nice pair of socks. I am going to finish this. I, my goal is by next podcast episode that the, the first sock is going to be done. And the second one is going to be cast on. I don't know if that's too ambitious. We'll see. The next project that is on the needle, which is actually the project that is currently using the needles that are needed for the other one, are these adorable pair of baby pants. This has like a drop bottom. I don't, I'm not sure if it's called a drop bottom or a drop crotch. But it's, it's, it's a saggy bottom pair of pants, which are so cute. I believe this is also a German pattern. Uh, the roses were also German. And it's so cute. I was aiming to have this done for a fair in the summer. And I realized that it was way too ambitious. So I kind of put it on pause while I worked on a bunch of other things. But... These are so cute. I'm just at the tedious part where I just have to keep knitting to make the leg. And I also don't know if I have enough yarn, so I'm probably gonna have to go back and get more yarn for this. Um, hopefully by next month, I will have finished the leg. Fin I'm, my goal is to finish this leg and finish that sock with this these pair of needles before coming back here and finishing the other leg. So that, that's my goal for these. Um, I didn't say yarn. For this is uh, Peyton's sock yarn. Don't remember name at all. I don't remember the name for any of these. Um, this is a hand dyed yarn from Hobby Lobby. 100% uh, wool. It's super wash, so can go through the washer. I think that's ideal for baby things is to make sure that it can go through the wash um and i have oh if i didn't mention i have four items on the needles i don't remember if i said that next one is this i am making my own pattern for a christmas tree and i'm still not done <laughs> it's a little late now um i don't know if i will finish but uh a lot of math work, a lot of trial and error, and I just haven't got to the the error part yet because I'm still stuck on the base. Um, 
I'll probably, after the craft fair, work on this quite a bit. And it should be a quick pattern because I just have to build up the cone on top. Um, I was using a format for like mathematical calculations, which I think for me just doesn't work because I get caught up in the math and then I get lost and then I have to redo all the math. Um, I think what works better for me is just keep trying and keep messing up until I get it how I want. So I need to get in there and get messy with it. Uh, this is a Peyton's 100% wool. This is not super washed, so this will felt when washed. So this is a, a hand wash only guy. And then finally on the needles, I said I was currently working on it. Oops, let me finish this, this little row first. Um, I have, I'm currently working on the I cord to connect this other pair of mittens. Where's the other one? I have both of these done and then I'm just working on the I cord to connect the two. But yeah, super cute. I love these. And I'm actually really impressed. This is a yarn that I used, um, to make a hat for my son when he was six months. I'll insert a little picture over here. Um, and I'm really impressed because I actually, with the same ball of yarn, this is uh, the same, also a Hobby Lobby uh, hand dyed. Love the color. It's so, it's a nice, like var variegated, variegated red. Uh, but I was able to make that hat, one pair of mittens, one hair bow, another pair of mittens, or almost another pair of mittens, and then I'm still going to have some left over. I don't think I'm going to have enough for another pair of mittens. Maybe I'll do a striped pair if I have enough time, or I'll probably use this to make a whole bunch of little roses. So I think that that'd be nice in this color and I actually will use it because I don't want to waste any of this. This is a, a really nice soft wool yarn. So that's that's probably my plan for the rest of it. Um, and then the final I guess section is my procurement which I have had myself on a strict strict budget lately because thrift stores are dangerous for me. Um, especially the thrift store by my house, because they're, for some reason, it's just that thrift store. Um, all yarn gets donated there. And I have found some amazing yarns there. I've found an entire like sweaters worth bag of Rowan silk and cotton that has been discontinued. Um, I've also found like, high quality wool and uh, hold on, I'll grab because I'm looking right at it. This really high quality expensive yarn. This yarn, which is from a dyer, I believe it was upstate. I don't know. I had the slip, like it was still inside of here. I was able to tease it out while it was in the bag in the thrift store. And this goes for $45. And I got it in a bag with a few other yarns for like six, four, four to six dollars. Um, this is a hundred percent wool and it's wrapped in nylon. Um, it, I wish I still had the little slip. It, um, it's a hand dyed, hand spun. Uh, I think this is from a, what would be called, uh, a collection of women inspired yarns. So this was inspired by a certain woman, can't remember who it was, but uh, it had like her little story and excerpt on it and like the colors and the yarn is named after her, which is really cute. Um, if I ever find it, I'll, I'll put it down in the description. 
uh, for the the yarn dyer and what the yarn is called. But yeah, I found this at a thrift store. So thrift stores are dangerous. Uh, also, I like to get um, like knit up sweaters or blankets and find uh, like textures, not textures, I guess the feel that I like and also with the yarn content that I like. So I walked into the thrift store with no plans. I had plans of holding holding my wallet tight. But I found this sweater. It's a large, which means there's even more for me to take apart. Um, it is way too boxy to wear. I have found some nice sweaters before that were wool, but I really loved them, so I kept them to wear and not take apart. But this one is not a flattering sweater, so I'm gonna take this apart. And also, it is, let me find the little, little content thin thing, 96% wool and 4% cashmere. This is so, so soft, and I really, I don't know if it's showing up that well on camera. It's like a really dark blue. It looks, to me, it looks grayish on here, but it's a dark, like, navy blue. I think it's really pretty. And I have high plans for this. It also, a lot of times, if you find wool stuff in a thrift store, it'll be matted together and felted. Someone messed up and washed it wrong. But this one actually has, like, good separation. And I'm positive that I can take this apart. So, very excited for that. I was only, like, $8.50. I'm gonna get... A whole lot of yarn from this so that's one of my hobbies is to get to get things from the thrift store to take apart it saves money and it is kind of like therapeutic just destroying something to reuse it all right so that is my only procurement for this month um let me get a drink of water my mouth is dry from talking so much All right, now on to the fun, gossipy, I guess, part. So if you're only here for knitting, that's the end of the knitting part. Um, I have some things to talk about. I'll start off with what I am watching right now. So I'll currently, um, I started with my boyfriend. We started watching Spy Family. I think we made it three episodes in is really good. I like it a lot. Um, not sure how many seasons it has. It probably has a lot because it's an anime. So probably gonna get sucked in for a long ride. Um, so far is really good. I mean, I only I am only three episodes in, so can't really can't really give it an accurate rating yet. The other one that I recently started back up again. I had it on pause for a while. Is uh. Fire Force, another anime. Uh, I am only like four or five episodes in. Still, still kind of slow. I've heard that it gets that it gets good, so I'm gonna wait until the end of the first season to see if I'm gonna keep watching it. Um, if I was to give it a rating right now, it would be like I wouldn't say five. It is. I have kept watching it, so probably like six or a seven we'll see if it picks up uh another one that is currently on pause you can't get the the theme here is i like watching animes i love the artwork and then i also like that they usually are really long series which for someone that gets bored so easily i only like watching series i don't I haven't watched a movie in a really long time. For some reason, I find movies more boring than series. Probably because I like I like the story to unfold. Well, while, while movies kind of have a time frame to get everything wrapped up in. Uh, the so the next one that's currently on pause because I'm in a really sad sad part of it and 
I can't push through right now because I don't feel like crying. This is Naruto. I am literally almost done. Last season of Shippuden. So close. Just the whole Itachi story arc is just so sad and I can't, I can't get through it. I'm almost there, but I can't. So close. Uh, when, I, when I'm in the mood to cry, I'll probably finish, finish that off. Ah, uh, but it's so sad. <laughs> so sad. So that one's currently, like, on pause until I feel like being, de be being depressed. Uh, another lighthearted one. I haven't watched it in a little while, but whenever I get the mood for, like, a crime show, um, is Murdoch Mysteries. That is on Hulu. Most of my shows are on Hulu because I don't really have access to, like, Netflix until recently. But basically all my shows are you can find on Hulu. Uh, Murdoch Mysteries, which is a historical detective story. So it's cheesy. It's historical. Um, it's like, it has funny reference jokes. I am a nerd at heart and I love history and I love historical fiction. So that really hits the spot when I'm, when I'm in the mood for something nerdy and also crime related. So those are my currently watching. I have one finished series that I just finished. So I recently got access to Netflix. My friend, uh, funny story. My friend gave me uh, her ex's account because she's still, he never changed his password. So she was like, see if this works. So I tried it and it does. So I watched the entire series of uh, Wednesday on there. And oh my goodness, the hype, it lives up to the hype. It is so good. I, I love that series. I binged through it in literally two days. I think it's eight or nine episodes in two days. I was up till 3 a.m. Just, I couldn't put, I couldn't put it down. It was so good. Uh, so definitely 10 out of 10. Love that series. So good. Can't wait for the next one to come out. Um, and then to go into, to segu over to books. Um, I haven't picked up a book in a little while. Um, because of knitting and this little fellow, it's hard to actually like physically open up a book. So I usually listen to audiobooks while working when I want to list to read a book. So I'll do the last two that I read, which I think were a little while ago. I started picking up another book, so I should be done. I guess I'll start with the one that I'm currently working on, which is... A Kingdom of Ruin um, by K.F. Breen. I listened to the first two books. I believe this is the third book. The first two I listened to like two years ago. And then at that time, this current book that I'm listening to wasn't out yet. It was literally releasing like a month later. And then I forgot about it until recently. So now there's the Kingdom of Ruin, which I'm listening to right now. And then there's a, the last book in the series, which I think is the fourth one. I'm pretty sure it's a four book series. The last one. So now there's two books that are out that I can finally finish the series. I like it a lot. It's not for everyone. <laughs> it's a fantasy, um, but it also very much is a, a spicy book. So not for all ages. Uh, it's kind of modeled after Beauty and the Beast, and I like all fairy tale, like, renditions. Um, personally, I like it. I know some people don't. I think the main character is very interesting, and there's not a lot of times that I actually like the main character. Uh, she's very colorful. She's very out there and weird, and there, there's a lot of, I guess, interest to her. Usually, writers don't don't make the main character interesting. Usually the the one in the spotlight is the boring one and the one kind of behind them, like the best friend position 
or supporting position usually has all the color back over here not the main one so I like that this one she actually made the main character like really interesting and fun to listen to her perspective and like see how she acts so yeah I like the the character building and all that in this series um now for finished books I have two that I these are actually lower rated books on my end. Um, I found them on TikTok, like scrolling through. I have a whole list of books that uh, TikTok went crazy over. And so I was like, all right, I'll put them on my list. So these are two of them that I got to that did not live up to the hype. The first one is From Blood and Ash. That whole series is terrible terrible and yes I did say whole series because I sat through the whole series listening to it the first book is okay it's an okay book it is not incredible it is not well written it is not that interesting that being said the first one is readable it's okay it has a plot, it has interest. Like I sat through it, I was interested. Um, and then since I found out it was part of a series, I was like, well, now I have to listen to all of the series because it's a series. Um, I started the second book and it was so bad. And just each continuous book just got worse and worse. And I was holding out hope that maybe this one will be, be better. Maybe it was just a little, a little blip, a little, you know, anomaly that it was bad and I would just pick back up and get better. But it did not. In fact, it got worse. And I sat through four of the books, the four that are out. And I was so happy when I got to the end of the last one. I was like, I never have to listen to this terrible book ever again. And then I find out there's two more books that are coming out, but I rage quit. I can't, I can't finish the series. It is just not worth it. It is too bad. And usually for audiobooks, um, you can hide a lot of that bad writing. Uh, like a lot of people think that Sarah J. Mass isn't a good writer. Like they'll admit that she's a good world builder She's good at like creating a story, but her writing, a lot of people say is not that good. However, if you're just listening to the audiobook, you'd never be able to tell that. Like it sounds amazing. And a lot of times with books that have poor writing, the audiobook still sounds great. But for this one, it is so badly written, so poorly worded, awkward like choices in dialogue and you can tell that it's bad just by listening to it. The wording, there's awkward dialogue. It's not realistic, like dialogue. Like they use proper words and address each other like each time. Just something about it is off and awkward. And then at the beginning of each book, there's a recap of what already happened. So I think that kind of defeats the purpose of having a series because each book is supposed to pick up where the last one left off. Um, but this one gives you a full recap of everything that happened before, literally when you first when you first start it. And it's in a dialogue sense where the character all of a sudden thinks of everything that already happened, which I think is one of the cheapest and most awkward ways of recapping what has already happened. There's an artistic way to do it, like by sprinkling it throughout, but definitely not like that. So my rating for that book is negative five. For that whole series is negative five. Maybe for the first book, I'll give it negative three. Because it was okay. But the whole series negative five. It was so bad. So bad. Negative five. The other one that I listened to is uh, Rhapsodic. Uh, that one also had like a lot of high opinions on TikTok. Uh, I few, saw a few like YouTube reviews as well saying that it was a good book. Um, so I finally 
uh, was able to find it and listen to it. And it was okay. I don't think it was incredible. I don't think it was terrible. It was kind of middle of the road. Um, it has an interesting storyline. It is the first book and the other two aren't published yet. I don't think. I think they're, they're going to be published soon, I'm pretty sure. Uh, next year. The next one is coming out, I think. Uh, but hopefully the story picks up because it kind of, it was getting pretty good. And then before the story could really peak, it kind of deflated a little bit. Like there was the lead up to the the, the zenith of the, the plot and then it just instantly deflated. So hopefully the next next books like bring that plot to higher to higher points that like actually are more interesting but overall the book was was meh it was meh it was also a fantasy um it was a new take on it like i haven't really read this kind before like it's kind of like both characters are bad but like in an interesting way, not in the cliche kind of way. All right, and so a final section, I'll talk a little bit about podcasts that I am listening to, um, I guess, or watching. I'll, I'll do that as well. I like watching, I've already said, Needles at the Ready. That's my favorite knitting podcast to watch. Um, I'm not gonna give this section a ranking. I'll just say what I like watching. So far, that's the only one that, like, I keep getting drawn back for more. I keep trying a few other ones, but it just isn't as fun and gossipy. I don't know. <laughs> Something about the these two, they're just professional, like, just, just chatters, and it's fun. <laughs> the other podcast that I like listening to on Spotify is And That's Why We Drink, it's a paranormal true crime podcast. It's two friends basically just chatting about like one story each that they have. It's really fun to listen to. Um, but that's basically all I do and listen to and watch and read. Um, if you made it this far, let me know. Uh, I guess if you made it this far down below, let me know what your favorite thing to do while you're knitting is. Um, but I will see everyone next time. Uh, bye!